Going on, Gorilla Fam. Just joining back at it again on Wednesday. It's today. So today we are going to do a pancit, which is uh, a Filipino lo mein, almost essentially. That's the kind of vibe you get from it. Um, I'll show you what we're working with as far as noodles. What's going on, Katie? We're making pancit today. Like I said, it's a Filipino dish. We've got our rice noodles, vermicelli, bihon is what they're usually called. Um, we've got our garlic, we need one onion, we've got a tablespoon of soy sauce, a tablespoon of oyster sauce, a teaspoon of um, sesame oil, and a teaspoon of fish sauce. Uh, yeah, I'm okay. Uh, my, dog, my oldest dog has a, uh, what we think is a tumor on his tail, um, so I have to take him to the vet tomorrow, and I'm really hoping that it's uh, nothing more than something malignant. Uh, what's going on, Chris? So, uh, if I seem a little down today, it's uh, just slowly starting to realize that he is getting up there in age, and, uh, you know, it's it's kind of hard. So, um, anyways, enough of that. So, we've got some of our carrots. I bought them pre-cut, julienne. I didn't feel like doing it myself. Um, some of that pork that we've been eating for the last two days. A couple pieces of... Uh, green onion, and then some celery. So let's start with this, how we usually do. We've got our little mandolin here and our garlic. And we're gonna set this to pretty thin because I want this to toast up really, really nice. Now this is one of these dishes, I'm kind of embarrassed to say this. Um, this is one of those dishes um, from a culture of people that honestly, 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 I did not know um, you know, much of anything about Filipino food, Filipino culture, Filipino people until I got into the Navy. Um, you know, so I had a crash course learning as soon as I got to Washington. There was a huge, 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 huge Filipino population at my first command. And that's where I kind of got in, you know, indoctrinated, if you will into Filipino food. Now, my knowledge isn't very vast on Filipino food. It's very, very rudimentary, if anything. Very basic. Um, you know, I know uh, dishes here and there, um, but I don't claim to be an expert. I am also a white dude, you know, making this food that I just like eating. Um, these are one of these dishes that uh, a potluck type of thing. This is what the, what would get kicked off for a potluck. Pancit, lumpia, um, adobo. So we're going to put this garlic back in there and then we're going to go back to our cutting board. But we're going to have to work a little fast because we do not want our garlic to burn. So we're actually going to cut the temperature down just a little bit. Readjust. Start working on some of these other things. Alright, so we've got our onion. Let me actually get rid of these comments. Today's item is pancit. It's like a Filipino lo mein with uh, rice noodles uh, instead of like a soba noodle. All right, so got this onion. And nothing has to be perfect on these. This is a very homey dish. It's a very rustic dish. And if you've listened to anything I've told you before, rustic just means chefs can charge you twice the amount of what we would usually charge, right? So. There's a rough little dice. These are going to get cooked down anyways, so it doesn't really have to be perfect. And like I said, we've got our already pre-cut carrots. Let me just check on this garlic, make sure it's not overcooking. Looks like it's doing good. And if you guys know anything about me, I'm not a big fan of celery, but almost every pancit dish I've ever had has got celery. It's got some form of mirepoix, which is a French term for um, onions, carrots, and celery. Um, in the Cajun Creole, they do a white, um, or they do what's called a holy trinity, um, which just means they've got peppers in there. Right. So, cut it on a bias. Looks pretty, um, plus you don't get a real... Real big 
uh, piece of piece of celery. So you want to go really, really thin because this stuff is going to toast up in that oil. We are going to cook and saute this down. If you guys see, I'm actually cutting on a new board today. Um, I cut on it yesterday. I showed a picture on the Facebook page. Um, I got a new cutting board made today by an old chef instructor named David Weir. Um, he also runs a, uh, a wood fabrication business. Um, it's outstanding here in uh, Florida, so I'm going to have him make a couple more things to outfit the kitchen in the backyard area so we can really entertain with food and you know having people over and stuff like that. Sorry if you can hear my cat. Everybody's outside and she's not, so she gets a little testy when that happens. So, and for this one, I'm actually going to save the green tops for later. We'll use those for presentation. And kind of like how we did with the um, with the stir fry the other day. We're gonna just cut these, and these don't have to be too thin, too thick. So like I said, it's all gonna get sauteed. Anyways, so. And if you don't like the pork, you can always add chicken. You know, it's, um, it's probably the most standard dish. And now you won't hear my cat meow at all because it went outside now um, with the rest of with my wife and kid. Um, it's generally traditionally done with chicken, but I've seen it with pork, I've seen it with shrimp, I've seen it with seafood. Um, so you can really make it your own. You don't have to use, uh, you don't have to use any kind of meat. You can do completely vegetarian. Um, this one, uh, we're not doing vegetarian. We're doing chicken uh, stock, um, and we are doing. Ooh, almost lost my pepper pepper grinder. And we are doing um, pork that I smoked the other day. So let's go ahead and face you guys back into this Dutch oven. So you already start to see my garlic's almost there. Almost there. So we want a light golden brown, or a light brown if you will. Um, and that's when we know to add uh, our onions and the rest of our veggies. Because that's going to cool down the pan and stop that garlic from getting too brown. Now, brown garlic, in a sense, tends to be bitter. I like using it when I do a stir fry or a ramen. Um, you know, just anything really like that. I like using it. Ponset's another good one. Um, pork belly adobo, stuff like that. I like using brown garlic as far as, you know, a, an accoutrement, if you will, or a, uh, a side along with it. Presentation looks pretty. It tastes really good. It gives it that bitter thing. Like I said, umami, right? Bitter, sweet, sour. Um, you know, just balanced. So we're going to drop all of our vegetables in. And we're going to cook this down. I'm actually going to upgrade and go to a wooden spoon. Just break apart all these onions real quick. We'll actually turn the heat up just a little bit in this pan so we can start putting some color onto these. And this is, like I said, this is a very, very super simple dish. It's a lot like the stir fry we did the other day, um, where it's pretty much one pot kind of meal. Uh, no. Haven't really been in the mood too much to do anything extravagant. Not to say that I'm burnt out. I just kind of want to break. I want to, you know, a little bit of a different um, approach this week. Something a little bit more slower pace. Um, plus, I want you guys to be able to do this along. Like a lot of you guys don't have the, you know, four or five hours ahead of time just to prep stuff. A lot of the stuff you guys need to get done and feed your family and you know get out there and water some stuff or you know, just normal normal day-to-day -day people stuff so i'm gonna next week i guess i'm gonna start doing a little bit you know easier friendlier dishes and then like i said i'll still throw those dishes in there that um if you wanted to do two three hours worth of prep which you don't have to but it gives you a sense of accomplishment it gives you a sense of like oh man i did this so that's rocking. So, anyway, just let that come sit down a little bit. Start bringing over the rest of our ingredients. If I've learned anything, especially from last Monday, you guys were watching. You guys saw me pretty much prep everything we had, had there. It's pretty much just cutting vegetables. Um, and then I forgot my vegetables, so I learned something. Always put your stuff right in front of you so you don't forget like I did. 
Always, always, always double check. But if I learned anything, it's just a, it's a learning curve. It means I get to do it again next time, and next time I knock it out of the park 100% by 98%. So, now it's starting to smell really, really good. Now, there's another thing I'd like to tell you about what I've learned. Not so much about Filipino food, but Filipino culture for sure. When I was in the Navy and I would hang out with Filipino people, they are some of the most loyal people you will ever meet in your life. Um, kind of like a ride or die type of people. Um, you know, if you mess with one, you generally mess with all of them. And uh, I never got pranked harder in the military by anybody that wasn't uh, not a Filipino dude. Like, they always got me good. Um, you know, a, a few of them on my first command would play into the, you know, the language barrier. You know, they'd say, oh, no speak, no speak. And then they, you know, they, they get you on a good prank and then, you know, man, it's like they could teach the teach English language at a, you know, the, as a professor in a college. Um, one of those times we were actually eating a clear beef stew um, and uh, they had had this pickled shrimp, right, very purple. Um, and I'd never, like I said, I'd never really had Filipino food that much growing up. So I was very, you know, open to suggestion, um, open and open to getting, you know, a, oh man, I'm out of pepper, open to getting me, uh, actually I got a little one over here, uh, open to getting not so much picked on, but pranked for sure. Um, so we'd sit up there and I'd eat this and he's like, oh, my friend, you got to try this. You gotta try this, you gotta try this. So, they essentially told me to put that into my clear beef stew. And I saw them do it, so I know it was edible. Um, but, it smelled really weird. It smelled like, you know, rotten fish. Like I said, it was just fermented shrimp. Um, and, uh, I asked them how much, which I shouldn't have done. I should have just put one little teaspoon and kept it at that. And I should have known once the guy's eyes lit up when I said how much. And uh, he told me just keep adding on, adding on, adding on. I think I put like a tablespoon, two tablespoons worth of stuff on there. Go to eat it and instantly you get that mouthful of just fucking shrimp, salty, fermented, just death in your soup. And <laughs> they all got a good laugh at it. I almost, you know, upchucked everything on the mess decks. And needless to say, I had to find some new friends after that, at least for a week or two until I got my pride back. Right. So the next step we're going to do, we're going to add this pork. Like I said, you don't have to use pork. You can use chicken if you'd like. Uh, you can do just all veggies if you'd like and have that too. You know, but I got all this pork that I, I didn't get to, to use on Mother's Day Sunday because it just wasn't done when all my, my mom and my sister and them came over. So kind of using it up now. And whenever you make meat, you know, Rule of thumb is generally a week safety. Uh, at least that's what they've said in all of my um, all of my food safety classes and all that other stuff. Um, uh, you really don't want to, you know, be messing with something for longer than a week. Uh, so we're on day two, three here. Yeah, day three. So we're still good. You know, you can actually freeze this now. Um, one of the great tools you can have in your kitchen is a. Uh, is a uh, vacuum seal bag. They work fantastic. Um, they're a great tool. They really hold food a lot longer. And this is that tablespoon of soy, tablespoon of oyster, teaspoon of sesame, and a teaspoon of fish sauce. Um, fish sauce and sesame oil is a very, very potent um, ingredient. You know, use sparingly. Um, or use as much as you like, you know, you just got to be ready to take that, that, uh, that flavor, I guess, to the dome. And I'm going to use about two cups of uh, chicken stock. Now, it doesn't, if you look in the pot, it doesn't look like that water is going to come anywhere near this. There's actually no liquid is going to be left in this by the time it's done. Um, rice noodles are going to expand, uh, and everything is going to be great. Usually, you throw the rice noodles in here 
after the water came to a boil. But this stuff's already rocking. That was room temp. Um, and we're going to cover it anyways. So that's pretty much been it for the day. I'll show you guys the picture later. Um, or you can Google a picture now and see what it's going to look like if you can't really wait that long. I will show you one thing before we go, though. Let's do some green onions real quick as far as just presentation goes. So what I like doing with green onions is I like cutting off the ends. And I save these ends. And I can throw them in the stock over oh, back there behind us. Or, you know, I'm usually going to throw them in my compost bin. What I like doing is the same way we did that celery, cutting at an angle. Right? Go as thin as you can. And always keep your blade on the flat part of your knuckles. Don't go above your knuckle and don't cut like that. You will minimize cuts from your knife. And if you do get cut, just make sure that knife is as sharp as possible. Um, most people think that, you know, if it's a sharp cut, or if it's a sharp knife, it's, you know, a more deadlier cut. It probably is, but it's generally a cleaner cut and then you don't have to worry about it tearing and shredding the muscle and the flesh and less likely to get infected with a clean blade because like I said, it slices and dices. It just doesn't shred and just damage. Right. So, like I said, that's pretty much been it. This is gonna take about 20 minutes for these rice noodles to reconstitute and all that liquid to boil out completely. So I'll show you guys a photo of that. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna do one, uh, do a video on Friday um, like I said in the beginning of the video, I do have to take my dog to the um, vet tomorrow. He's kind of got a mass on his tail that's just blown up um, in the last four days. Uh, we thought it was a hot spot, but, you know, he is a little bit older. Uh, what's going on, Sam? He is a little bit older, um, so, you know, we're gonna, I'm going to take him in tomorrow. Hopefully he can get seen. Um, and I just, like I said, I hope it's just nothing. Um, and I'm just worrying for no reason. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to do one on Friday. That's all going to depend on um, what the vet says about my dog. With that being said, that was the video for today. Um, I'll show you guys the picture a little bit later. Uh, do me a favor. You know, um, whenever I post something, try to engage a little bit. It, it doesn't cost anything. It doesn't take anything um, more than just 10 seconds worth of time. Hit a like, you know, hit a heart, hit a share, hit a smiley face. I don't, didn't really bring any funny laughter today, uh, which I apologize for. Hopefully the next video I do, I'm a little bit in better of spirits. Um, yeah, I just worried about my dog. Um, so yeah, just share the video, share the photos, check out the blog. Uh, Larry just put together and edited the pork stir fry I did Monday where he made a whole bunch of magic stuff go, ha go on and happen and it looks cool. Um, so check that out. It's on YouTube. We shared that if you don't mind, share that. Um, check out the blog, subscribe. Um, and I'll see you guys hopefully on Friday. So thank you again for taking the time to, you know, spend it with me for, you know, 20-ish minutes or so. Um, and I'll see you guys as soon as I can. Thank you again. Don't forget, like, share, subscribe, follow. Hearts and smiley faces always, always, always outweigh the thumbs up. But I'll never, never, ever say I don't want a thumbs up. So. Do what you guys do, and I'm going to do what I do, and I'll see you guys in a couple days. Thanks again. Bye-bye.